Back on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell. It is uh, UConn Thursday here. Dan Hurley was first, Jen Rosati second, the CT Sun president, chairperson for the Team USA. God, how many more titles can you fit on that uh, <laughs> business card, Jen, as she joins us on the Bobby V's Hotline? How are you, and are you with Team USA right now? I am with Team USA out in Phoenix. We're here for the WNBA All-Star Game. Um, and don't forget, I'm also coaching the 3x3 team. So that's there you go. My, main pur- my main purpose here, head coach of 3x3, getting the team ready to, to head to Paris in a couple days. All right, so how is coaching a 3x3 team different than a regular team? Um, actually, I don't know if I have enough time, but <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a completely different strategy. It's a much faster game, so it's 12-second shot clock. It's all live play. You don't really stop playing unless there's a foul, so it happens really fast. Ten-minute game. There's only four players and one sub, so you kind of are continuously working. Um, Three-pointers are worth two. Two-pointers are worth one, so premium on being able to shoot the three-ball. Um, but yeah, it's just really exciting. It's it's a, it, for coaching wise. I can't coach during the game, so I have to prepare them and coach them up so that when the game starts, I sit in the stands and I don't get to talk to them until the game's over. So it's very different. Explain the roster. Who's on your team? Who who do we have representing yeah. Team USA? Yeah, it's exciting. So we have a WNBA All Star uh, Dierka Hamby from the LA Sparks. We have Ryan Howard from Atlanta Dream. And then we have Sierra Burdick, who's a longtime um, 3x3 professional player and used to play at Tennessee and in the W for a couple of years. And then Haley Van Liff, who's college player at TCU. I have to ask about the big CT Sun news. I was sad okay. to see Rachel Banham and also Mariah Jefferson leave the team. However, a great consolation. I am super excited of Maria Mabry joining the squad. I feel like her personality, her intensity, her defense totally matches what's already going on at CT Sun. She adds a three point shot. But there's not any bad blood with her and anybody, right? Like, I know she yeah. kind of starts stuff across the league, but well, we're cool in the locker room with her coming in, right? You know what? We're going to find out in a couple weeks <laughs> when they come back from the Olympic break. But, no, I think you know what people forget is that they're ultimate competitors on the floor, but they all have a lot of respect for each other. And, you know, our team is at a place where they are want, they want to win a championship. And we felt like adding a guard of Marina's ability to make shots, to make plays, to have the ball in her hands in clutch moments. Her, her clutch statistics are really high. Um, it was just a too good of an opportunity for us to pass up. And it's always hard when you lo- lose great humans. And I'm not sure there's two better ones than Mariah and Rachel. So very, very sad to see them go. But, um, I, you know, excited on the basketball front to have, a, a, you know, a potential all-star type player and, um, veteran and somebody that has like a little chip on her shoulder and a, and a great work ethic, which fits re- re- in, in very nicely with our squad. Talking to Jen Rosati, the CT Sun uh, president. Let's talk about your club, 18 and six on the all, uh, the Olympic break, five and five going in, and it's really the one team that seems to be a thorn in your side. What's up with you guys in the New York Liberty? How come you guys can't beat them? Yeah, you know, we're saving it. You know, this is so funny. This is, uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like Chicago a couple of years back. Like we, they were like our nemesis, and we just couldn't figure out how to get over the hump. And then we go out to Chicago in Game Five of the semis, and we just figured it out. We won. We won the series, and everyone was a little bit in shock. And we've been fine ever since. So I kind of feel like we just need that one game to get over the hump with the Liberty. Obviously, they're super talented. They're a reason. There's a reason that they're fir- they're first in the league right now, and. We're going to have to find a way to beat them, which is one of the reasons we made this trade. I think it makes us better as an offensive ball club, and we just haven't shot the ball well when we've played against them. So we need guys that are ready to make shots, and we need guys that are, you know, at the end of the game when it's close and we need a bucket, they're going to either find a way to facilitate or or make a shot because we have a great front court. And I think the combination of guards we have with Ty Harris and Dijanae who have had breakout seasons, and you add Marina to that mix, um, we're just in a really good position to be able to handle that better going forward. The toughest player in all of sports, MMA, football, and NHL yeah. c- included, is Alyssa yeah. Thomas. And you did not mention her as one of the guards. However, she is kind of like yeah. a point forward, point center. How does yeah. that work in the mix of just offense and basketball with her running the show? And how is that going to work with Team USA? Yeah. Well, Alyssa's unique in that she impacts your offense so much without really scoring very much. Yeah. You know, she can put numbers up, but she is um, a tremendous passer for a forward. 
Uh, she, she is deadly in transition. She's either going to get downhill and get a layup or she's going to find somebody for an open shot. Um, she's a good screener. You know, she understands the game. Her IQ is super high. So when you add players around her that are really good, she's going to be able to make the play to help you win, right? She might not be the guy that scores it, but she very well could be the person that has the ball in their hands before that person receives it to score. So, you know, we're lucky to have her. She impacts the game in so many ways. She's obviously been a longstanding Connecticut Sun professional player for us, and we, we definitely would love to see her not only win an Olympic gold medal in a couple of weeks in Paris, but to be able to come back and, and win a WNBA championship right, right on the heels of that. All right, so last time we spoke down in Mohegan, you talked about gaining uh, you know, more eyeballs on your product. You're now yeah. getting that. Ha! How do you yeah. keep the momentum up uh, going forward? Yeah, we just got to keep playing great basketball. We want you know, the entire time that you're at Mohegan Sun Arena, you feel like you're, you're at a show. You know, the product on the floor is great. We're playing competitive basketball. We're vying for a championship. But also what's happening off the court is great. So our activations, our crowd energy, the music, you know, the videos we play, it's just, you know, it's part of that business, you know, mind that I've had to adapt over the last couple of years as team president. But just making sure that it's, a, it's an entire production and that when you come to a WNBA basketball game, you're going to see more than just great basketball. You're going to have a great time. Jen Rosati, team president, CT Sun. She is at the All-Star event that will take place Saturday, 8.30 with the tip-off. This is, I love this setup, it is the WNBA All-Stars versus Team USA. Now, everyone has a season after this break, after the Olympic break, that we have to worry about staying healthy for. However, the WNBA All-Star team may have a few females that, uh, I don't know, feel like they deserve to be on that Team USA. And yeah. I think that this is going to be a heated competition. How do you yeah. balance that out to where you want a good run, you want to put something on for the fans, but you want to keep everybody as healthy as possible as yeah. well? You know, it's tough. It's great. It's obviously great preparation for our Olympic team. You know, we normally the all-star game is kind of like just everybody lets everyone shoot and score, right? And this is actually going to be competitive because, you know, I think the all-stars, as much as they want to play well, they know they're also preparing the Olympic team. So it's going to be a battle. Last time they, we did this, the all-star team won. So, you know, you had a player like Arike who felt like she got snubbed last time and came out and had like 25 points in the All-Star game against the, the Olympians. So yeah. she very well is capable of doing that again. You know, obviously everybody's talking about Caitlin Clark not making the team, so she'll be on the court opposite the Olympians. And, you know, again, it's it's ultimate competitors. Um, John Cole Jones, who's the former Connecticut Sun player, is yeah. going to be on the All-Star team. But I think for Cheryl, as much you know, there's a lot of pressure on Team USA, much more than on the All Stars. So they play with a little bit looser mindset because they're not supposed to win. So it's a little more fun for them. But for Cheryl, it's a great opportunity for them to play essentially against the other best team in the world in order to get her Olympic squad ready for Paris. Let me ask you about Cheryl Miller, and she's from my era, and how good she was, and how mm -hmm. how she pushed. Uh, you know, women's basketball to a different level with Nancy Lieberman, obviously. Um, but but talk about her influence and and do the girls recognize that when they're playing around her? Uh, you know, absolutely. I think Cheryl Miller is an icon, and I think anybody who has played and coached in this game knows that. And I think we all wish that we could see her play now, right? Knowing what she was able to do <laughs> right. so many decades ago, you you wish. She's one of those players where you're like, oh, I wish we could transport her into 2024 and see her stack up against an Asia Wilson and a, and a Brianna Stewart and Alyssa Thomas, right? Um, but it's just it's just so nice to be able to have her so involved. She's been to WNBA games. She's been going to college games. She's just staying involved and um, using that influence that she has. And I know the young players look up to her. They all know who she is. They're all excited when she comes and talks to them after the games. And so I think it's a you know, legendary move to be able to put her on the sideline for the all-star game because, you know, she, she's absolutely one of the best to ever play the game. Olympics right around the corner. And as we've seen in the men's game, not quite so where we have two players from France getting drafted in the top two spots of the draft, but we do know about a lot of Australians in the college mm -hmm. game for women's basketball. We are huge Nika Mule fans from Croatia. Yeah. The rest of the world is catching up to the United States when it comes to all forms of basketball. Team yeah. USA's biggest competition, who would that be coming uh, July 26th yeah, when we get yeah. things started? I mean, it's hard to say. I think probably between Belgium and China, 
But it's not like, you know, the rest of France in France and Spain and Japan. I mean, they're a lot better than people think. I mean, there's probably three or four Chinese players in the WNBA right now, as yeah. well as players from France. Um, and the, the, the Emma Miesemann is arguably one of the best players in the world. Um, and she's, you know, impossible to guard in, on the Belgium national team. So, you know, it's, it's really amazing how hard our team works to make it look easy, but it's not easy. As, as somebody who was on the sideline for the 2021 Olympics and on the sideline for the 2016 Olympics, we spend a lot of time preparing for these teams because we really respect how good they are. And so I'm looking forward to watching our team compete. I know that they'll win, but it won't be as easy as it looks. Talk about how it compares the the international style of basketball. I, I know mm-hmm. the men sometimes uh, it takes a little bit to get together, but like you said, you have to you have to prepare for these other. Well, they they also train together, you know, a lot more than we do. You know, we're we're getting together. We have I think Cheryl has seven practices right total before we have to play on July twenty sixth. So. She, she, people don't realize the value of all these previous camps that we've had for three years. The 12 Olympians named to the roster have all played together on inter, in international competition on the World Cup, and they played for Cheryl. So that experience is invaluable because we don't get a lot of time to prepare. Belgium, China, Japan, Spain, they're together all the time. So their teams have a chemistry that we have to build much quicker. Um, so, you know, the style of play is different. They're much more fluid. They space the floor differently. Other than China, there's not really anybody with big um, post players, right? So you got to chase them all over the place. And it's exciting, but there's so many different styles. And I think the versatility of our, of our roster is what's going to make this, this team special because they can pretty much guard anybody with the versatility we have across all 12 roster spots. Well, Jen, I know you're really busy. I appreciate your time. Ben, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And good luck with Team USA and, of course, the CT Sun. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you, Jen.